Hello, this is Cynthia Sue Larson with RealityShifters.com and today I'd love to talk with you about CERN and the Mandela Effect. And CERN, of course, is the laboratory in Switzerland which hosts the Large Hadron Collider. It has many concurrent experiments running, including the Atlas Project and a couple of others. And this last month, in the beginning of July 2022, it was fired back up full power. So what does this have to do with the Mandela effect, you might ask? Indeed, um, there have been some theories and some conjecture that something is going on with the Large Hadron Collider, with CERN, that is concerning people. <laughs> no pun intended. So using discernment to see through the concern, <laughs> can't help it, I'm just on this roll now with the CERN. Uh, we want to just take a look and see what is going on. And to that end, I'm getting more serious now. There's a wonderful article published in the, I'm just showing the cover illustration and the author here. It's showing the Large Hadron Collider at CERN. And then this is uh, the author, Jason Kobler. And the article title is, Is CERN Causing Collective Mass Delusion by Creating Portals to Alternate Dimensions and Investigation? And this is a very um, beautiful article, really, um, not just because it starts by mentioning me, which caught me off guard when I first read it. I was not expecting that they'd start off that way. Um, but it's, it's accurate that I have been indeed looking to see any new noteworthy Mandela effects, also sizable increases in observations of Mandela effects. And although I've seen a lot of interest in the topic, mostly um, concerning some of the big Mandela effects that people had noticed many years ago. Um, I haven't yet noticed anything that one might expect if CERN was really causing the Mandela effect to have come through. Certainly it's had time. We're now toward the end of July and it was fired back up on July 5th. So basically I haven't seen it, but I'd love to hear from you if you think that you're seeing evidence that shows that you can definitely link CERN and the Large Hadron Collider with what's going on. Um, the, the thing I like so much about this article is that not only does it mention my point of view, but it also includes the work of a physicist who's there on the Atlas project. Her name is Clara Nellist, and here's a picture of her freeze frame from a little TikTok video where she's doing her best to dispel some of the conspiracy theory talk related to some of the things, um, for example, like double stuffed Oreos used to be called that. and. Um, the little video clip that she shares, she then responds and says, look, bro, just because you misremembered something does not mean CERN is going around changing your Oreos. And then she says, there are much higher energy particle collisions happening in our atmosphere all the time. What CERN is doing is tiny in comparison. I can promise you we're not going around changing the labels on your food. And that's a playful way to respond, but um, you know, obviously for those of us who are in the community of the Mandela Affected, um, most of us don't call it mis misremembering um, because we know that that's not been our experience. And another third reason I love this article is because the author, Jason Kobler, also introduces some excellent research that's being done at the University of Chicago. It's in a preprint form right now. And he's, he's got these graphics that are included in the article. I'll show you one of them. This one right here is just a walkthrough for the study participants that were selected based on speaking English and being engaged on that mechanical Turk platform where people can get paid to do surveys. And the participants um, also didn't abandon the survey. So they started it and they didn't quit. You know, they had to finish more, most of the questionnaire. It probably was a long one. Um, basically, you hear, see here C-3PO, the Fruit of the Loom logo, Curious George, the Monopoly money bags guy, Pikachu from, you know, the Pokemon, and the VW logo. And so what's interesting about questions like this were that um, participants had an opportunity to take a look either at the original, which is the top one, and you can see here C-3PO has a silver leg, Fruit of the Loom has no basket, Curious George has no tail, and so on and so forth. Um, and then the next one down is manipulation one and then manipulation two. And why is this so significant, you might wonder. Well, the significance is what happened when people took this survey. And they basically started showing that um, even though people were pretty confident, they were getting things wrong in the same way. 
Not only that, but it's another separate study. Here's a separate study. Now I'm showing you lots of things. Um, there's Where's Waldo and C-3PO and, and you got your little um, Curious George, the VW logo, the money bags guy, Pikachu, Fruit of the Loom. What happened is then they would show people what the accurate logos are and then ask them, go ahead and sketch it from memory. And even though people are very confident they're familiar with this figure, whatever it is, and even though they just seen the accurate um, portrayal of it, um, strangely, so many people drew the the logo or whatever a little differently, and they did it differently in the same way as one another. That's where the Mandela effect, in my opinion, and also in the author opinion, Jason Kobler, uh, we've left the land of misremembering, and we are now in open territory where clearly there's something else going on. What is it, you might well ask? And that's a question that's been left for all of us to keep working out because even the University of Chicago um, researchers, who are doing excellent work by the way, and this paper, um, it's in preprint, and the psychologists, you can look it up, they're Wilma Bainbridge and Deepasari Prasad, and it'll be preprinted. Um, It'll be all included in a link in my blog, so you can go there and if you want to click through. Or you can find it in a, just going to that Vice Motherboard article, and there's a link to it there as well. And so this is the article again that I'm showing you. I'd love to know your thoughts on this, um, whether you're strongly of the opinion that CERN definitely has something to do with the Mandela Effect. Um, why, If you feel that way, please share why you feel that way. Um, if you feel like there's no way that could be, that's interesting too. <laughs> And if you have any questions or interest in um, what's going on with the study at University of Chicago, I think a lot of us will have interest in that, and it's something that we're all looking forward to seeing. Um, I also like the way this article included many other um, um, things that I've done. It, cr it included the, that keynote speech that I gave at the conference in Sun Valley, Idaho in November 2019 that turned out to be our first event for International Mandela Effect Conference that... Uh, Jerry called forth into being and the quantum businessman Chris Sinatra and Shane Robinson of Unbiased and on the Fence and myself were all part of. Um, this article that uh, that has been written published in Vice Motherboard also mentions Moneybag73 as one of the presenters at our conference and some of the work that he's been doing which is outstanding and he's constantly showing fresh examples that he's finding of the Mandela effect. So when I say it doesn't look like there's been a huge influx in July, I just mean um, overall. Obviously, there are still researchers working diligently, uh, such as our own International Mandela Effect Conference. Each month we show you new examples of animals and plants and so forth as our sponsors. And, um, and of course, money bags and many, many other wonderful YouTube channels. So also feel free to include in the comments if there's a specifically wonderful channel that you love and support. We do have an ongoing uh, call for recipients of the International Mandela Effect Conference Golden Mandy Award, and we're still looking for people to submit their favorites. So you can leave it in a comment for me, or you can go and vote. Um, we're definitely running that survey. We mentioned it again in last month's June 2022, um, Season 2, Episode 6. And that was the one where we had Rory Duff, the geobiologist. And there's a link in there uh, in the video to our survey as well. So until next time, keep asking my favorite question, how good can it get? And you'll probably find that everything gets a little bit better when you do. I know it certainly works that way for me and love to share my top tips with you. Take care. This is Cynthia Sularson with Reality Shifters.